Okay, folks, we are back. So I hope you've enjoyed your first couple of weeks of our flipped classroom experience and our videos. Um, once again, going back over these a few times is helpful uh, when you are uh, doing your assignment or preparing for your assignments that we're doing in class. All right, uh, we're going to do some other conversions today just to get used to dimensional analysis. And you know, as we go through these, you're going to say, well, this isn't really related to chemistry, and, and you're right. But the process that we go through, dimensional analysis, we use a lot in chemistry, you'll see as we go through the year. So it's important that you are able to work through these uh, relatively simple examples so that you can use this method for the rest of the year on many of the chemical examples that we do. All right, so notice uh, that in working problems that involve only the metric system, the number of sig figs in the answer will depend only on the original data given, since all conversion factors are definitions and therefore have an infinite number of sig figs. Now, for your information, when we go from metric to English, of course, that those conversion factors are not based on powers of 10. Uh, for instance, one inch is the same as 2.54 centimeters. One pound is the same as 454 uh, grams, and one quart is 946 cubic centimeters. And technically, uh, these conversion factors here from metric to English each only have three significant figures. So in reality, uh, 453.6 grams is equal to a pound, and I'm not quite sure what comes after that six, but the number does. At any rate, so these might limit us and our significant figures in our answer, unlike conversions within the metric system. So let's do a couple of, uh, well, English to metric and vice versa examples. You'll have a few of these on your assignment in class and maybe for homework. So let's say I wanted to convert a 7 foot 4 inch basketball player's height into meters. Now make sure your answer makes sense. You folks know about how long a meter is, so you know that this person that's seven foot four probably isn't going to be much more than, I don't know, two, maybe three meters tall. So make sure that this answer here, you know, is not, you know, 30 meters or 0.2 meters or something like that. Make sure your answer makes sense. So um, I converted his height uh, from feet and inches just into straight inches. So there are 88 inches and 7 feet 4 inches. And of course you want to get out of inches and into centimeters because I don't have a conversion factor that allows me to go from inches to meters directly. So first I have to go from inches to centimeters. And you can see that 1 inch is 2.54 centimeters. Now if I were to stop the calculation right now, I would be in centimeters. Well that's not where I want to be, I want to be in meters, remember. So I need to make another conversion from centimeters to meters. Now this is what we learned in the previous video. Have you learned your metric conversions yet? I hope so. One meter has 100 centimeters in it. Remember, centi means a hundredth. So that means you need 100 of them to make up one meter. All right, so centimeters divide out. And we are in our desired unit, meters. So let's follow the process here. It says we need to multiply by 2.54 and then divide by 100. So let's do that. 88 times 2.54 divided by 100. Now my calculator says 2.2352 meters. Now that does sound reasonable. That's between 2 and 3 meters. So I think I'm, I, I'm correct, but I need to round off to the proper number of sig figs. You can see I have two sig figs in my original measurement, three in, my, three in this conversion factor, and this one, of course, has infinite. So I'm limited to two sig figs, so I have to round that off to 2.2 meters. Okay? Seems pretty simple, doesn't it? You might want to try the next one on your own. We're going to go from pounds to kilograms. Times, it's nice to pre press pause on your on your playback and then just try it and try it in pencil in case you screw up. You can always erase and fix your mistakes but you can learn from your mistakes also so you might want to pause this uh, every time right before I do a problem for you to see if you can do it. Alright, so we're going to go from pounds to kilograms. 
so I have pounds to grams. I have that conversion there, but not pounds to kilograms. So let's go from pounds to grams first. And one pound is 454 grams. So now I'm in grams. And then we're going to hop out of gram and we divide by what we want to get out of and get into kilograms. A kilogram is bigger than a gram, and a kilo means thousand. So one kilogram is a thousand grams. So grams divide out. So we're going to multiply by 454 and then divide by a thousand. So let's see what we get here. 355 times 454 divided by a thousand is 161.17. So let's see, I have infinite sig figs here, three here, three here, so I can have three in my answer. So this is 161 kilograms. Okay? Alright, let's try gallons into liters now. Now I don't have a conversion factor that will go from gallons to liters, but I do have quarts to cubic centimeters. Now remember, a cubic centimeter is the same as a milliliter. Do you remember that from the previous discussion? So we could say one quart equals 946 milliliters because cubic centimeters and milliliters are the same thing. So on this problem, I want to go from gallons to quarts first. And uh, hopefully we know that in a gallon there are four quarts. And then we can go from quarts to cubic centimeters. And one quart is the same as 946 cubic centimeters. And then we can go from cubic centimeters to liters. So quarts are gone. So one liter has how many cubic centimeters? Remember, a cubic centimeter is the same as a milliliter. So one liter is the same as a thousand cubic centimeters. And so this will give us our answer in liters. So here we go. We have one gallon times four times 946 divided by a thousand. And I end up with 3.784. So let's see. Infinite sig figs here, three sig figs here. This is a definition, four quarts are in a gallon, so that's infinite. And I have three sig figs here, so I can round my answer off to three sig figs. So I'm going to call that 3.78 liters or in a gallon. Okay? All right, now example number 15 is a bit involved. We're going to be changing both the numerator and the denominator unit. So please, this is as hard as it gets. If you can do this one with me, you can do just about any dimensional analysis problem. So see if you can hang with me on this one. So an oxygen molecule at room temperature travels at about 4.0 times 10 to the fourth centimeters per second. I don't know about you, but that doesn't mean very much to me. I'm used to velocities in miles per hour. So I wonder how fast that oxygen molecule is traveling in miles per hour. Now this problem, will consist of two conversions, one from centimeters to miles, so I need to change my numerator from centimeters to miles, um, and one from seconds to hours, so my denominator has to change from seconds to hours. So let's set it up here, 4.0 times 10 to the fourth centimeters per second, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change my numerator to miles first. Now I don't know how many centimeters are in a mile, but I do know how many centimeters are in an inch, which takes me into the English system. So I know that one inch is 2.54 centimeters. So if I were to stop my calculation now, I'd have my velocity in inches per second. I don't want that. So I'm going to get out of inches and into feet. Now one foot has 12 inches. That's a definition. Now why did I get into feet? Well, because there's a conversion factor that can take us from feet 
into miles. Do you know what that is? One mile has how many feet in it? It's defined as 5,280 feet. So, if I were to stop my calculation now, I'd have miles in my numerator and seconds in my denominator. I have miles per second. I don't want miles per second. I want miles per hour. Now notice that seconds are on the bottom. So to divide out of it, don't I have to put that unit on top? And I want to get into hours. Now one hour has how many seconds in it? Don't say 60. There are 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. So wouldn't that be 3,600 seconds in an hour? And seconds are gone. So I have hours in my denominator. I have miles per hour. So now all I need to do is multiply whatever's on top and divide it by whatever's on the bottom. So let's see what we get. 4 second EE to the fourth. Remember that's 4 times 10 to the fourth divided by 2.54 divided by 12 divided by 5,280 and then we'll multiply by 3,600. Now my calculator says 894.7745 yada 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 a bunch of numbers after that. Well let's see we have infinite here because that's how many seconds are in an hour that's a definition infinite here, infinite here, three here, and two here. So I have to round that off to two significant figures. So 894 rounded off to two significant figures is not 89. It's 890 miles per hour. So at room temperature, an oxygen molecule is traveling at about 890 miles per hour. Okay, I think I'm going to make this video a little shorter. Uh, the next one we're going to do example 16, and then we're going to talk a little bit about density. Okay, alrighty, have a great day. Bye bye.